photos from Goropanima and seen one or two pictures and I was surprised how many devotees uh, collect there and very happy to have such a such a center, such a place for the devotees. And Gurudev was very happy when that center appeared. Wonderful. So, welcome to one and all from Chintamani, ever in the car, along with Jayadev somewhere nearby. There's Jayadev from in the back. Why? Because this is their home. They are traveling and in the vehicle all the while, going from A to B and staying sometimes in C, or going A to C and staying sometimes in B. But on their way to, in American, a Z, or in English, a Z, being Goloka Vrindavan. Krishna, Krishna. Dandavat to all devotees, everyone very punctual. Vancha Kalpa Truviyastra Kripa Sindhviya Evacha Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha. Enjoy. Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Rokha, Kridha Dev Goswami Maharaj, founder and charger of Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Marki Jai. Enjoy. Srila Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Sunda Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj, our inseparable servitor and successor to Srila Guru Maharaj. Ki Jai. And Jai Shila A.C. Bhaktivaranta Swami Prabhupada, by whose grace we are all here and have come to hear about Mahaprabhu's message. Ki Jai. And Jai, their father, their spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad Bhagavan Srila Bhaktisiranta Sarasati Thakur, Ki Jai, by whose, not only whose grace, but not only for the world, but for India, for everywhere, made it very clear clear what Mahaprabhu has given. So grand jais to all our grand masters and to our Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Acharya Brinda, the present day section of devotees around the world spreading Krishna consciousness and connecting us to them. Ki Jai. Hare Krishna, all devotees. So just so we know each other, Rupa Nuga Prabhu we saw very briefly. From in Australia, our Dandavat to Rupanuga Prabhu to Radha Sundari. So very international today. Rupanuga Prabhu in Australia. Oh, with the Panchit. Where did he? Yes, there you are. In Australia, Dandavat and Radha Sundari in Brindavan. Paramana, sorry, Radha Sundari in and uh, Navadip. Yes, Radha Sundari Dandavat. She's in Navadip. And uh, Paramanand Prabhu in Thailand. And Seva Rupa and Mathura Basini Devi Rasi are in South Africa and Chintamani and uh, Chintamani and Jayadev Prabhu somewhere in America. Probably in California. Pro uh, now in California. Okay. Gone from Las Vegas or wherever it was to California. And Kumkum Devi Rasi from where Krishna consciousness under the banner of Guru Maharaj has spread all over the Western world. That is the place where it came, San Jose in California. So come from David Asi then, Pran Praneshwari David Asi in Florida, the eternal summer state. What's Florida's caption? The, sun the sunshine the state. Sunshine state. Yeah, the sunshine state. There we are. And Premananda, the Paramananda has disappeared from our eye. Oh, Hari Bol. There's Sundari's little daughter. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Very nice. We have a family staying with us. And uh, Devaki Nandana Prabhu, I don't know if any of you know him. Long time, a long time old friend. And uh, he's, when I've known him, he's been a single, a single Brahmachari man. He's now married man with four children and another on the way. And they are traveling where they were locked down in South India. And they're traveling to Czech Republic where he lives. And yesterday, 
we've got, uh, we were going through the valuable saver that Chinmoy Day Prabhu has been doing, converting digital, uh, no, converting regular tapes, VCR tapes in the old days. Yes, you all know VCR tapes, so the windy, windy tapes, been converting those to digital format. And yesterday evening, then we watched with them and they were so happy to see some footage from uh, Czech Republic because Devakinandan Prabhu is from Czechos, well, what was Czechoslovakia, you know, Czech Republic. And he was there, naturally, he was there in those uh, movies. So he was going to the past when he was a simple brahmachari. But he's a happy householder. And the kids, two of them are twins. Two of them are twins. Two-year-old twins. Energetic twins is the description. So why did I mention him? Not sure. But maybe thinking of Chinmoy Day Prabhu and our international gathering today. All right. And maybe Chaitanya Nitai Prabhu will join us from Vrindavan. Let's see. Sometimes he's able to, to join. Then we're getting... We need a devotee in Puri as well. Hare Krishna. So, did we have any homework last week? I don't think so. We need some homework, don't we? Okay, so during today's chat, we can introduce some homework. And what we can say is that in, for many of you, it is uh, Ramanuja Charge's appearance day. Today, or the end of your in the afternoon time, so it's the afternoon of his appearance day. And Bon Maharaj, Bhakti Hridoy Bon Maharaj's appearance day. So from two different generations. And Ramanuja Charja, uh, he is one of the, the four principal Acharjas of the four Sampradayas that Mahaprabhu showed. Yes, they're all giving us pure God consciousness. Or they're giving us the, the real thing, but not the fullest of the real thing, as it were. So from um, Mad uh, Madhva Charja, from Nimbaka, Vishnu Swami, and from Ramanuja, then the, from these four Sampradayas, and Mahaprabhu is showing they're all bona fide. But where are they taking us to? What is the goal ultimately? And then Mahaprabhu showed, basically started his Sampradaya, as it were the Rupanuga Sampradaya or the Gauriya Vaishnava Sampradaya. And this means taking us to the goal, the highest point uh, beyond what each of them have given, but they've all given the foundation for the understanding of spiritual life. And um, I know uh, for, well, for us, it was yesterday, different of us told different stories yesterday about Ramanuja Charja. There are many stories to tell about him. But Ramanuja Charger, he was giving pure devotional service to the Lord, Dasyam, giving service to the, the teaching about how the Jiva soul is the servant of the Lord. And it may sound to us not to be remarkable, but in the time of Ramanuja Charger, then it was a very difficult time to understand you know, what is the actual goal that Krishna is the goal and we are the servants of Krishna. But fortunately for most of us, probably for all of us, our introduction to spiritual life proper, as it were, to the teachings from India, has come from Srila Prabhupada, from Srila Sridhar Maharaj, from Srila Govinda Maharaj. So from the very beginning, we've been hearing that the the, that we, the jiva soul, is a separated spark of Krishna's energy. And it's, we've come from Krishna and we are for Krishna. And our proper position, just like the proper position of a gear in a gearbox, if any of you ever opened up a gearbox or seen a gearbox of a motor car, 
you know, all the gears are inside, one, two, three, four. It doesn't just happen by magic. Inside there, there's a very organized way that the gears are, are working together and very close to each other as well and very cleverly arranged how each gear is contributing to the working of the gearbox. And so when all the gears are in the right place, everything is going smoothly. But then if a gear goes out of place, then, and well, maybe not everybody knows, but we do have some experience. <laughs> if one gear goes out of place or something isn't there, working quite right then, oh dear, there's one big mess inside the gearbox. So at the moment, we are in the messy gearbox. We've got to, and we are the cause of that. We are not only us, but we are amongst gears in the box which aren't in the right place. And so there's always clash coming. There's always so many things and the gears getting wrecked and having to be remolded as is a new birth. So anyway, it may be a bad example, but some way that we've, we've learned from the beginning that our proper position is when we are in our position of service to the Lord, that we are dasa, 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 no dasa of the Lord. And this is indeed Mahaprabhu's prayer to be in such a position. So, oh, here's Nirupama Didi. Did I miss you out? Nirupama is in Ukraine. So, yes. Maybe she danced around the screen. Nirupama Didi, Dandavat, in Govinda land in Ukraine. Sometimes the devotees are dancing on the screen and they, they, they move. So, sorry, excuse Nirupama Didi. Happy to see you. So, to us, it seems, yes, of course, we're a servant of the Lord because. That's how we've learned from the beginning, more or less, hopefully. That's how we've learned from the beginning about what is the message of the, the ancient India, the Vedas, of the Bhagavad Gita, of Srimad Bhagavatam, etc. But how do we know that? How is it that that idea has come to us, even from the, the, from the scripture? And that is because we've been reading the scripture, the scripture that's come through the devotees, and so when we can hear from the devotees, we can get the right perspective about what is the message which is given within the Sanskrit teaching. And Sanskrit is an esoteric language. So it's not always so straightforward that you get four words one after the other, and then that the meaning is going to be you know, so immediately apparent because of the technicalities of the grammar and of the implications, etc., etc. And so even short excerpts that are given in Chaitanya Charitamrita, generally they are given with a, a translation into Bengali, because remember, Chaitanya Charitamrita is it's essentially it's written in Bengali for Bengali persons and for the world to understand. And it's written in the simple, simple language of Bengali, instead of the more difficult to, very much more difficult to understand language of Sanskrit. So the ancient scriptures written in Sanskrit and so many interpretations of what is there, just as, not exactly as just as, because this is mundane, but Shakespeare, Shakespeare, you know, we went, well, we, I went to school once upon a time and many of us who went to school and in the English countries then, Shakespeare is a standard like text, but look at all the interpretations of a mundane person's um, poetry. When English also turns into poetry, then so many um, like subtle things being indicated and moods being indicated by the language. So, so many interpretations of what Shakespeare is saying. And some agree with each other, some don't agree with each other. So now take this to the actual spiritual platform, the spiritual books that are telling us about something which is beyond our um, experience at all in this world, then we really need to come to somebody who knows what, in the case of Shakespeare, what, sh what did Shakespeare mean? You know, he didn't just put random words down and then have a whiskey and have a laugh and say, oh, let's see what they make of that. I have no idea what I've written. 
you know, we do think that he probably did have an idea because obviously he was a, a brilliant writer. Otherwise, people wouldn't still be talking about him today. But it's not in the case of the spiritual books, then it is a medium between our mundane, our gross world, our world of matter and our conception of matter and the upper world, the world which we at the moment can't touch, we can't even hardly see out of the window to see what it looks like in the distance. But the scriptures have given us that, the sadhus have given us that, the means, the sincere seekers. And so today, in a way, we may take things for granted that, yes, of course, we're a servant of the Lord, like the gear in the gearbox. That's my right position. And when we're in the right position, everything goes properly. But Ramanuja Charger, he's always, he's, his life was one of difficulty from the very young age all the way through in the sense of that he always was um, facing the challenge and being challenged by the impersonalist, the impersonalist, the Mayavadis, those who are considering that the scriptures are all telling us that we're just coming from a big power. And then by jungle, juggling, juggling, juggling and juggling the words, and they're trying to make interpretation that the personality comes out from the power. First, there's some big power called Brahman. And then from that is coming everything else. And this is the goal of the Mayavads, the impersonalist is that we are going, that is our home, that, okay, we get out of material everything, and then we can just be a, a happy particle floating in the, in the um, power, just return to the powerful, and we lose our identity, even that they are trying to do, to lose everything, willing, feeling, and thinking. But, Shankara Charja is Shiva himself, and Vishnu Narayan gave him the service to baffle the population. So he had a he had a an unfortunate service. He did not want to do it, but said, "Yes, it is for a purpose." And the purpose, in the long term, is explained again by the devotees who do know the final conclusion of the scripture. And that final conclusion of the scripture has been given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Ramanuja Charger, he faced the challenge of the, the Shankara Charger's Mayavad philosophy you know, throughout his life. And he faced that challenge. He openly told about how the, the, pers the personality of Godhead is the origin. If we, what, whatever we have, the Lord must have more, etc. And even about the eating, offering food, etc. If we can eat, the Lord can eat. It's not that oh, he can't eat. How can I? In general, we have to sort of think, oh, how, can, how can I offer food to the Lord? But if I, if I can eat, he can eat. So we need to make a sitting place for the Lord, invite him to sit, offer our food, and he can eat. When we make a prayer, we do have some understanding that he can hear us. Maybe we make a prayer with a guilty conscience, saying, oh, I'm very bad, but please, just this once you do this to help such and such, such and such. I did not study so well for my exams, but just this once, please make me pass my exams. Please ignore all my bad qualities. I want to pass my exam. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to get chastised and I won't get a good job. And then when we go for the interview, again, it's, you know, please let me get the job. Somehow or another, this tendency to know that he is there is in the background and sometimes in the foreground. And... When we are praying, again, what are we praying to? Nothing? Praying to zero? No, we're praying to, we know somebody is there hearing, the personality. So Ramanuja Charja, he was giving us very much the servitorship of the Lord. And his uh, pastimes come up in many places. And 
uh, in also in Navadip Dham Mahatmya, we were reading recently, there are his pastimes, and a year ago, and a bit, because the months are racing by, then we were in Jagannath Puri, and <laughs> in Jagannath Puri, devotees are always very happy to hear some pastimes of Jagannath, hear pastimes of Mahaprabhu, and hear pastimes of his devotees. And Ramanuja Chaudhya was a great devotee, and he went to Jagannath Puri, and we can maybe mention one, this one pastime that devotees do like to hear, because Ramanuja Chaudhya, he was very educated, he knows what is in the scripture, he knows the rules and regulations for many things, including for the worship of the deity, and indeed worshipping the deity, again, the Lord is invited into the deity, the deity is there, and so Krishna is there in the deity, and so Ramanuja, he knows all of the like rules and regulations, but he's there with his disciples, and he's seeing each day, you know, the activities of the of the pandas in their service to Jagannath, and then he's seeing, oh, they're not worshiping properly according to the scripture. There, this is little lax. This uh, doing this in a different way. It shouldn't be done like this. It should be done like this, and then he was very powerful. He was very famous and learned. And so he'd convened the, the meeting of the uh, pandas and of the chief of the pandas that they call Parichoy, I believe. is the, Parichoy is the chief, like manager of the servitors of Jagannath. And anyhow, they gathering all of the, the pandits and the pandas of Puri together. And Ramanuj is it's already established from the scripture and with them all settled that, okay, do you understand? Here it is, the evidence from the scripture that this should be the, the mantras for that, this should be done before that, that should be done after that. And, and, and what, what to speak of, he saw that they're using starched cloth when they're putting new cloth on the deity, which they're doing regularly, then they're, they're not uh, washing the cloth first to get the starch out of the cloth. And maybe in the West, I do not have that much experience. Maybe there isn't much starch or any starch in the cloth. If you go to the cloth shop and buy cotton or silk or something, then in the West, maybe there is no, starch, I do not know. But in India, anyone who gets a, a new dhoti or a new sari, then like Goro Panima Day or something, and they're putting on their new cloth, you know, I think you all know when you take it out of the wrapper, it like it's just all sticking out everywhere and you're trying to pat it down and it just kind of jumps out again. It's kind of very starchy. It's not very, not very flexible. And anyhow, this tradition is there in India until today that you unwrap a new dhoti or a new sari, and then it's like very like cardboard almost. And anyhow, they they were offering this starched cloth, but in the scripture it says that you must remove, wash out the starch first. Various things, not only one thing, but after meeting again and again and having these debates with the, the uh, managers of the temple of the servitors, then the very next day was going to be the day, day when it was already decided, it decided and it was going to be ratified. The king, or however it was, was going to make the sign. Okay, it's going to change. It's now they're going to make that decision firm. So then Ramanuj, he goes to bed at night. And then when he wakes up in the morning, then he looks around and he thinks, where am I? Whatever happened to me? And then um, he woke up in the place where we did go to last year, our last stop before coming up to, to Puri, because we came up from the south when we went to Puri last year. And uh, Ramanuja uh, Charger, he woke up and in his bed, he woke up, he's in his bed. And then he just can't figure out where he is. He gets out of bed, looks around, and then asks people, hey, where am I? And he was in Kurma Kshetra, which is 
I don't know, it's maybe recorded how far away it is, but it's quite, a, it's a few days walk, at least you can say that. And those days, it was a days of walking, not of anything else. And he went to bed at night in Puri and woke up in his bed in Kurmakshetra, along with some of his associates. And uh, everyone likes to hear this story, but he, and because uh, he had a dream in the night also that, oh, don't change the things that are in Puri. And this is Jagannath came to him in the dream. Like, don't change the arrangement that is here. I am the master, Jagannath. I am the master of what's happening in Puri. It's by my arrangement they do this, they do that. So don't you try to change things. And he woke up in Kurumakshetra. So many incidents, Raman, this does not happen to ordinary people. So don't expect that your decision will be uh, granted and think, oh, well, if I wake up in the morning and I'm still here, then my decision to do whatever I'm going to do tomorrow is, uh, <laughs> is confirmed. <laughs> That's not a very safe way of making, of deciding decision-making if it's right or wrong. Hare Krishna. So Ramanuja Charja, an extraordinary personality. And so it's good to think about him today and to again think about the situation before Ramanuja Charja, very, the whole society so um, Mayavad, swallowed, swallowed by Mayavad, you can say, this impersonal idea of the Lord, which is actually hateful to the devotees that, oh, they cannot understand about the beauty of the personality of Godhead. So, Srimad Bhagavatam heard from the right source. Bhagavad Gita heard from the right source. The whole of the Vedas heard from the right source, but the spotless Purana is Srimad Bhagavatam. And what could be a more right source than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, Radha Krishna combined. And from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we see that Srimad Bhagavatam is what he revealed. He revealed Srimad Bhagavatam in um, both the, like the scriptural form, but in the practice form, he embodied what is given in Srimad Bhagavatam as pure, unalloyed, spontaneous, loving, devotional service to the Lord, to Krishna. Also, the Lord in many aspects, but his, the original, original Lord is Krishna. This established by Mahaprabhu. And again, in relation to Ramanuja Charja, when he was in South India, then for four months, Chatur Masya, then he stayed uh, during the rainy season in the house of Venkata Bhatta. Correct me if I get any names wrong here, Paramananda, because I tend to get names wrong now and again, but Venkata Bhatta, and Venkata Bhatta was the, the brother of Prabodhananda Saraswati, and Venkata Bhatta was the father of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So he stayed with them, but Venkata Bhatta and the, the family, as it were, they are in Rangakshetra, which is the capital of Ramanuja Charja's uh, teaching, Sampradaya, and the very large temple there in Rangakshetra, Rang, Temple of Ranganath. And this was, became his base, and there is a whole story how that became his base also. Um, so Mahaprabhu, he stayed there in Puri and giving all respect to Ramanuja Charja, what is given, but pointing out that it's not the end. It's not, it's all perfect, but there is more perfect. And then the, the um, family and where he stayed in Rangakshetra with Venkatabhata, Gradually, Mahaprabhu saw, he saw their pure devotional mood, but gradually he put the seeds of not formal worship of Lakshmi Narayan, but of the spontaneous loving devotional service of Radha and Krishna is the highest form of worship. And in a very gentle and affectionate way, then 
he brought this to their attention. And by the potency of, of course, Mahaprabhu is Radha Krishna. He is um, very influential, you can say. And anyway, by his potency, and then they all became devotees. And that time Gopal Bhatta Goswami, the son, uh, he was a boy and he was there and he was able to render a simple service to Mahaprabhu as a young boy. And then later in life, then he became you know, one of the six Goswamis. But there, it illustrated very much the, uh, uh, by Mahaprabhu uh, to uh, the followers of Ramanuja, Acharya, to that section that Radha Krishna service is more than the Lakshmi Narayan service, because they're also in the mood of Dasyam, the servitorship, then Ramanuja Charja has taught servitorship to Lakshmi Narayan, which is perfect in its, in its, in perfect, and it is perfect, but there is more perfect because the original Lord is Krishna, but he, kind of hiddenly, because it's quite obvious in some ways that Narayan is very opulent and he does lots of things like make the universes. <laughs> so that's a kind of, a, and has lots of wealth and, I mean, everything is clear that he is the Lord of Lords, but little less clear that his origin and origin of origin of origin is Krishna. But Mahaprabhu, he brought this into the, into the Ramanuja Sampradaya. So anyway, a little bit about Ramanuja Chajra. Because we're happy to say, and really, the whole basis of our life is that we've, we need to come and we have here, all of us, we've come to where we're getting the cream or the maturity of the teachings, the maturity of the teachings of all of the Veda. Where is it taking us to? And Mahaprabhu came, but still we have to find where Mahaprabhu's message is being maintained. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, he had to practically start from scratch in many places to establish, as Mahaprabhu did, to establish Radha Krishna and the spontaneous loving service to Radha Krishna developed through the chanting of the holy names in Seva mood. And indeed, talking about Ranga Kshetra and South India, when Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur went to South India, then he recorded in the uh, magazines that he would publish, which would have the news of the preaching that they did in various places. He recorded, he said, when I went to South India, I was attracted by, I was attracted to go to South India, hearing of the purity of the devotion of the people. But when he went to South India, his, Srila Sarasati Thakur's comment was, it was practically as it was before Mahaprabhu went to South India. And so again, the necessity to bring back the Mahaprabhu's message of spontaneous love of God centered on the chanting of the holy name and spontaneous love to Radha and Krishna. So the Krishna conception, the Radha Krishna conception, then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur again in assemblies and with his books and through his generals, his disciples, then he again brought this to South India as well as North India, as well as East India. And actually one of his generals, as we mentioned in South India, and in other places was Bhakti Hridoy Bon Maharaj, whose appearance is today also. Yesterday for the West, the, the Middle and Eastern Hemisphere, and for the remote corner of the world, and USA and that side it is today. So yesterday and today. But good for us to, rem to remind ourselves always of these great personalities. And Bhakti Hridoy Bon Maharaj, was um, with Guru Maharaj and actually he was Guru Maharaj's senior in length of time in the temple, as it were, and also senior in 
that he introduced, uh, not introduced, he recommended Guru Maharaj uh, to Srila Sarasati Thakur. So he recommended Guru Maharaj to, to Srila Sarasati Thakur for sannyas. And um, due to their preaching around India, then Bon Maharaj, who was a senior man and sannyasi at that time, then he uh, told, he saw the capacity of Guru Maharaj for preaching very purely and very accurately Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur's message, Mahaprabhu's message. And so uh, after being with him you know, extensively doing the touring, it is Bon Maharaj who recommended to Srila Sarasati Thakur that he uh, receive sannyas. And he said he's a very good preacher, but not a very good collector. <laughs> I think, I think Guru Maharaj couldn't squeeze people too much for, for money. He could explain what is what and then simply say yes. Please, we are asking you, but if they say no, we can guess that maybe Guru Maharaj didn't corner them too much, whereas maybe others are more able to seal the deal, as it were, to be a more efficient collector. But this is what he told to Guru Ma to Srila Sarasati Thakur. But anyhow, thinking of South India, it was Bon Maharaj and Guru Maharaj together um, leading the, the Seva to establish a temple in Madras, now Chennai. And it's a major city in the South of India and a key city in the South of India, one of the principal cities of India. And uh, then Bon Maharaj and Guru Maharaj, then they preached in South India and then they came to establish the temple there, which means they had to preach and do collection, etc. And through all the legalities and then to start the construction and many things involved to, to establish an ashram and especially in a city, in the countryside, maybe easier to make a place, but in a city, even then, many much red tape, many things to go through. So Bon Maharaj and Guru Maharaj were together. And then it was during that time that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, he uh, wanted to send Guru Maharaj to the West, but Guru Maharaj explained that Srila Sarasati Thakur, I think I have some disqualification for this and others may be more fit. So he said, I consider others more fit because they know the English, they know the intonation of the English people, they how they speak English in the Western world. So they will be able to understand them and they will, others are better able to mix with them. And Guru Maharaj was not so um, capable in his means, his whole upbringing to be able to mix closely with those who don't follow the principles, who arm lectures in scriptural words. And Guru Maharaj said, I find it very difficult to be able to do like this. So I may not be the best person to mix with them. They will feel uncomfortable, etc., etc." And so Sarasati Thakur, he considered, and he sent Bon Maharaj, who was uh, serving very closely with Guru Maharaj. So then Guru Maharaj explains that when when Sarasati Thakur sent Bon Maharaj, then he was left in charge of the whole project in Madras. And so in South India, even though generally they are Vaishnava, but in South India, the big work of Sarasati Thakur to again establish what Mahaprabhu had established by his tour in South India, where everybody became ecstatic by chanting Krishna now. And so this was done as an extension of Srila Sarasati Thakur by Bon Maharaj and by Guru Maharaj, by Bhaktis Ranga Goswami Maharaj, who became Bhaktis Ranga Goswami Maharaj, and by others of the, of the generals of Mahaprabhu's, of uh, Mahaprabhu's mission, yes, under Sarasati Thakur's cleaning the environment. So we are fortunate because we've, we are coming to hear from Guru Maharaj, we're coming to hear the message of Mahaprabhu, the message of Sarasati Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, the message of Guru Maharaj, Gurudev, Srila Prabhupada. We are coming to this uh, source of information and 
and connection with the upper world through them. And so uh, we are very fortunate that we're able each time to hear from the beginning the correct conception about God, Krishna, Narayan, the, the Brahman effulgence, etc. From the beginning, we're learning this instead of like we learn something at school and then we have to unlearn it later to learn, oh, actually what they told you in school wasn't right. It is something different. But when you've been told something for the first like 20 years of your life that two and two equals five, then you tend to believe two and two is five because your father told you, your mother told you, your uncle told you, your teachers told you. But then we find oh, two and two equals four, and that's the missing thing, why nothing else worked. May not be a good example about two and two, but anyway, this whole idea that what we learn when we're young, naturally is going to be Im embedded in us. And so to unembed it and put another conception, very hard work. Anyway, the importance, the gratitude to our masters, the gratitude to the Lord. He's given us our family here. And now may we all take whatever is in our heart from our masters, whatever we understand, which we can be sure this is right, even if it is the smallest thing, but we're sure it's right. Then we share that with others. They will be happy and they will be smiling upon us. Hare Krishna, and been speaking too much. Amiya Sindhu Prabhu, is that your picture? Oh, it's your name as well. Just see. <laughs> Amiya Sindhu Prabhu has joined us from somewhere in India. Govinda, Govinda. And we may get a revelation of where there's some. Oh, there we are live. Amiya Sindhu Prabhu. Dandavat. Your microphone, you have to click your microphone off. Good, good to see you. Dandavats, Dandavats Maharaj. Are you in, are you in Mayapur too? Yes, I'm in Mayapur. Ratha went somewhere, so I'm using my phone now. Oh, okay, so you're there. You're not, <laughs> you're not traveling in remote corners of uh, India, shooting yeah. people with the camera. <laughs> quickly. Actually. With helicopters, Maharaj, with helicopters. The drones. Yes, with, with drones. Oh, well. Favorite, <laughs> favorite thing for Abdul Maharaj to go every, every, how you call it, every afternoon he's going with his drones to uh, film bu buffaloes on Ganga, like the Ganga, uh, buffaloes bathing in the Ganges. So then <laughs> they film with helicopters. And the buffalo, like cowherd boys, they try to hit the helicopter with a stick. So they're like hunting the helicopters and Audut March enjoying. He's, that he says that's his naturally see. He sits in Ganga and talking on the phone, sitting in Ganga. He says best they see. So we're in we're here in Navadvip in Mayapur and uh, having a great time. Every day Audut March is going with his crew, Pagal TV, he calls them. <laughs> so he's going to all the places. Well, Srila Gurudev, he, would, he always thought about the names. He didn't give random names to the deities, to the ashrams, to the temples, and to the devotees, he did not give random names, and especially to his sannyasis, <laughs> you can say. And yes. Gurudev, what was the name he gave? Oh, yes, Avadut. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Avadut Maharaj. Extraordinary personality. So you're all still in Mayapur. Okay, so we yeah, have... Yeah, we're still here. And uh, to, yesterday was a, a election. So big election day. And after election, maybe it will be locked down again. So I hope we'll be locked for another lockdown in our deep. All right. <laughs> As soon as you mentioned elections in Bengal, then I do remember yeah. all the loudspeakers, all the canvassing. Yes, Audut March enjoying also very much. <laughs> He's composing lots of poetry about Indian election. Okay. 
अरे फिल्मिंग विथ फिल्मिंग विथ हेलीकॉप्टर्स everywhere we go there's some people approaching avdut maraj trying to convince him to vote for bjp or trinamool and <laughs> <laughs> so we ha- we're having lots of fun here we we vote we'll follow in the line of uh, ramanuja charja and and mahaprabhu we'll vote for the lord <laughs> yeah that's that's what that's what avdut maraj that's what avdut maraj is telling them also and especially goranga and by the way ramanuja charger he also had darshan of navadeep and this recorded it's in the, we were just in goropanima it's recorded in the navadeep dharma hatnia and then mahaprabhu told oh, you leave your disciples behind you come to navadeep here i'm going to reveal to you a hidden treasure and so he revealed navadeep to him and his form as goranga to ramanuja charger but he explained but ramanuja your duty now is you continue what you are doing your contribution is important and i will utilize this later when i appear here in my preaching so ramanuja charger also has his connection with navadeep down the topmost of all holy places the most generous place so our vote is in particular <laughs> for mahaprabhu nitai and goranga Yeah. Right. Yes. Jai. Paramananda Prabhu, I've been talking away. I didn't stop talking. I am a monster. Paramananda Prabhu, please share something. On, on our, I mean, you share whatever you like, but our, really our fortune to come to the teachers who are giving us the, con- the, the conclusion, giving us everything and not holding anything back. Our wonderful Guru Bhaga, Karmananda. Maharaj, what would you like me to say? You put some I... words into my mouth, and I will repeat. Ho ho ho! Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare <laughs> Those Krishna, words are already Hare in Krishna, your mouth. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Anyhow, Maharaj, a wonderful explanation. This reminded me. how sometimes we say that this vaishnava established this line and this vaishnava established another line the sampradayas the branches of the sampradayas the sub sampradayas but really it's all existing eternally like you said it's descending amnaya tatva divine knowledge it's the current that always exists and sometimes it's become manifest and sometimes unmanifest and when we hear from bhagavad gita yada yada hi dharma shabda nirbhavati bharata adyutana madharma sadatvanam tijamaham paritranay sadanam etc so when that is that kind of situation arises then krishna he always sends his agent and again he is sending his agent to satisfy certain hankering of the devotees according to their hankering according to their understanding and realization he reveals his forms like for south india ramanuja chari he is revealing the glories of vaikuntha the glories of narayan lord vishnu other some pradayas they are revealing some other sides of absolute truth but again how fortunate we are to come in rupanuga some praday the gaudiya some praday of madhava some praday it's always separated madhava some praday and then the branch or the continuation or actually the some praday of all some pradays akila rasamrita murti in the words of shila guru maharaj the uh, the rupa nuga sampradaya where madhuri ras is fully manifested and again during the time of mahaprabhu before mahaprabhu appeared what kind of situation was in the world everybody was suffering but they were puri touring everywhere and not finding many vaishnavas Advaita Acharya crying for Lord to descend. He's saying that only you can fix it. Look at what's going on around. So please come, please come. So in a similar way, every time there is that kind of situation, like you described before, Ramanuja came, Dimun Acharya was there, Natamuni, the Alvars of India. But uh, the need of this uh, great, great preacher was there, and then Krishna sends Vishnu, Narayan. He sends Ramanuja Acharya. to continue his words and later on uh in other sampradayas appear in different time and all of them have fully bonafide 
fully authorized to exist by the Lord himself. Again, to fulfill the needs and hankerings of the devotees. When Baladev with devotion defeated, and we have to remember that that challenge came from the Ramanandi, means a branch of Ramanuja Sampradaya. And they were a little bit envious. They had, and they admitted that, so we, we can say that. They're a little bit envious because King of Jayapur gave the worship of Govindaji. And remember, the, the city of Jayapur was built as an offering to Govindaji. The whole city was an offering. It was for the deity. And of course, it was a very prestigious position of which Sampradaya, which lineage will worship. So they challenged because of envy. And then Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he sends his best disciple to represent Gaudiya Vaishnava, Baladevi devotion. Then he defeats, he composes Govinda Bhashya, just like Ramanuja. All of the Sampradayas, Ramanuja, in order to defeat Shankaracharya philosophy, he composed Sri Bhashya, the commentary on Vedanta Darshan, Vedanta Sutra. In a similar way, Baladevi devotion, he composes Govinda Bhashya the commentary on Vedanta Sutra to support the authority of Gaudiya Sampradaya because everybody thought, oh, you're just a bunch of sentimentalists. You're just jumping and singing and dancing and you don't have any philosophy to back you up. Whatever you're saying, it's not you know, authorized by the scriptures. Then it was confirmed by Baldevi Devotion with the help of Gavindaji, with the blessings of Jiva Goswami, with the blessings of Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. And all the all four sampradayas and their branches were present during that meeting, and at the end, they were their hearts were melted by that explanation. How can it be otherwise? Coming from Krishna Himself, and they're saying, "Oh, please, we're ready to give up our lineage. We want to become a part of Gaudiya sampradaya. So please give us shelter, give us initiation, take us in." And then Baladevi devotion with the folded hands, he says, "Oh." All of your sampradayas are worshipable. They have place to exist. This is the desire of the Lord. So please continue nicely in, the, in your lineage. Be loyal, be chaste to your lineage. So that was the plea of Baldevi devotion. Just please do not disturb the situation. Do not disturb the worship of Gavindaji. Do not disturb my Guruji. So that was established. So the divine current, always there. Sometimes visible, emerges, sometimes submerges. But those who are in that current, they're always emerged in that current. It never dries out. It's nothing, nothing mundane. The rivers can dry out. The oceans can dry out. Even the, the, the Mahapralaya can happen. Everything will be destroyed, not just dry out, but destroyed completely. But that divine current is always there. And sometimes it is discovered. And Krishna not always coming himself. You may think in Bhagavad Gita, he's saying, oh, I'm coming myself. No, he's fully represented through his devotees. So he's sending his divine agent. And Ramanuja Acharya was such divine agent. Shakti Avesha Avatar. So Krishna is fully present in the heart of the Vaishnava. He says, Acharya Mam Vigyaninam. Navamanyata Karhichit. I am fully represented in my devotee. I am the Acharya. I am the Guru. I am the Vaishnava. What else can we say, Maharaj? Just thinking about our fortune that we're still in that current. We are, I'm not saying I'm in that current, but we have people who are in that current. And I, I heard if you catch their lotus feet and don't let it go, they will take it with you. So this is our foremost duty. And as we know, Saraswati Thakur said, the foremost duty of the residents of the mud is yes, Maharaj, please tell us. We want to hear it from a Vaishnava. Maharaj, but you have to you have to unmute yourself. <laughs> you can't lip read? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Let us hear it from Praneshwari because she's heard it many times and we have not heard her voice yet today. Praneshwari, what is the foremost duty? To serve Guru Dev and his associates. Okay, good. Kum Kum Diri, what's the foremost duty? Of the resident of the Mat. To serve the mission of the Mat. All right. Okay. 
Okay, well, because it's a line on my screen and I'm not taking <laughs> in any other way. Seva Rupa Didi or Mathura Vasini Didi. <laughs> you go to serve the Paish now. Are you muted? Oh. No, no, no. You can hear. Okay, very good. Who knows? Rupa Nuga Prabhu, we're going to ask you the foremost duty of the resident of the mat, of the temple. Rupa Nuga Prabhu. I think Nirupama knows, but whether she can understand our English. Oh, my name, I mean, Sindhu Prabhu knows. He appeared. Ah, well, he's coming with a vol volunteering an answer. Well, he's chewing means he wants to Sikh. say that foremost duty is to accept Sikh. prasadam. Sikh prasadam. <laughs> <laughs> Maharaj, you have to tell us, Maharaj, really. Oh, but I would have thought that our, our good gathering here, they will know. Now well, you have to eliminate everyone. Now nobody wants to touch the unmute button on their phone. They're hiding behind the unmute button. <laughs> Tolerance. This is given by Srila Sarasati Thakur, which is, it is surprising that he says that. I mean, to me, it was, a, it was a surprise when I first read that years ago, and it's still a surprise. But it shows that really this is such an important thing in our life. The first so the duty of the resident of the mat is Tolerance. Oh, yeah. So to conclude my thought, Maharaj, our topmost duty is to catch the lotus feet of the Vaishnava in the mood of Trinada, Pisanishana, Tarori, Vasa, Kishnana, Amani, Namanada, Nekirtanya, Sadahari. Serve the lotus feet of the Vaishnava. Don't let it go. And then one day you will end up in that current. Jai, wonderful. And by the way, all of you were right about what is the topmost duty. It is service. It is chanting the holy name. It is Amiya Sindhu taking prasadam. All of these are the <laughs> other things indeed, but pointed out by Saraswati Thakur is tolerance. But service, everything, of course. Anyhow, yes, so today some appreciation of the Vaishnavas, Ramanuja Charja, Bon Maharaj, his appearance day today. And just very quickly, we can't. Uh, uh, com complete or finish without just mentioning the two. Bon Maharaj, he is the first of the preachers that he, that Srila Sarasati Thakur did send to the West. We just briefly mentioned it just now about how when he was sent to the West and Guru Maharaj was left with the whole charge of the Gaudiya Mat in Madras developing that. And when Bon Maharaj went to the West, he did meet with, with the influential persons, the dignitaries of the time, etc. And uh, he struggled, he did uh, much difficulty, and as Gurudev points out, did not show much success. It's not that there was a great gathering, great following that came after his going there. But Bon Maharaj, and then presently also uh, Bhaktisranga Goswami Maharaj, he sent and others he sent to accompany him to. But Guru, uh, Gurudev mentions that these devotees who went on behalf of Saraswati Thakur, Saraswati Thakur staying in India, they sowed the seeds for Krishna consciousness in the Western world. And when Srila Prabhupada went to the West, those seeds, they fructified into the great worldwide tree of Krishna consciousness that we see today. So all credit to all of the, the great Vaishnavas, and even though apparently not any not a, any remarkable result, still all contributing to setting the the scene for Krishna consciousness to come to the whole world. So we are all indebted to all of the great Vaishnavas and see their example of selflessness, of their dedication. And no doubt their tolerance of so many things. And as Guru Mahar said, as Gurudev said, rather, describing about Guru Maharaj and uh, when they were staying in Calcutta and in different places um, within the Gaudiya Mat, he said at that time you'd have six or eight six or eight sannyasis in a room 
It wasn't that everybody is living in some, you know, uh, luxury style, as they would say in India, but it was very much the basic, basic life, sleeping on the floor, sleeping in a simple cot, but that their life was very simple. So certainly all of them exhibiting tolerance in order to do, to do such great service for Sarasati Tako. And they were from, you know, all from respectable families. So they're giving up all of the, like my, me and mine and giving themselves for Sarasati Tako. So today remember Raj. Bon Maharaj. Something Ramana. else came to mind in connection with the divine current that I heard from Srila Gurudev personally, and it is very beautiful. When I, I was talking to Srila Gurudev about a succession to whom we are to follow, in general, I'm asking Gurudev, let's say you're not visible anymore, then who are we to follow? And I thought it's going to be just a nominal answer. I mean, no, you have to follow this Vaishnava, that Vaishnava, because I'm giving them chetra for service here, chetra for service there. And he taught for a while. And then he said, Prabhu, you find the Vaishnava through whom the divine current flows, who inspires you, and you follow and serve that Vaishnava. And then immediately I asked, Gurudev, but how I am to recognize that Vaishnava? I have no capacity. And immediately Gurudev answered, Guru Maharaj will help you. Understanding that it's not Guru Maharaj will come personally say, Paramananda, oh, this is how it works. And no, through his instruction. So Gurudev was referring to Guru Maharaj's ideals. He's preaching his instructions has been given. We have so much wealth. So taking that into consideration, he is saying, try to understand what is the divine current? Try to understand who is the divine agent. And then inspiration will come to you. And when it comes, you follow that Vaishnava. And that I heard from Srila Gurudev and that connection. Yes, Prabhu. Actually, we've heard many things from Srila Gurudev. Always it is uh, Guru Maharaj centered and always it is substance centered. And so... We are here for the substance and not to dilute anything, actually. And this is why all of our centers around the world, wherever there is some temple, wherever there's some ashram, it is there to give Guru Maharaj. That's what Gurudev wants and that's what Gurudev is doing. And so substance over form, but some form will be there. Some and especially that the form will be the Vaishnav etiquette. That Vaishnav etiquette must be followed. This Mahaprabhu himself showed that. Gurudev showed that. Guru Maharaj showed that. We've seen their lives. And so we also must be careful to try to keep closely or right to the point of Guru Maharaj and Gurudev's presentation. All over the world, you find many places that will teach you about yoga and about whatever theories and whatever it is. I mean, unlimited places where you can go to learn general things. But we must always remember that, yes, we may be teaching some general things in some places, but that's just to attract people to come, to hear the message of Guru Maharaj and Gurudev. We mustn't leave, lose that focus that the unique thing about our ashrams, our temples, our devotees is that they are presenting Guru Maharaj and Gurudev, just as the whole of the Vedanta is coming to Mahaprabhu, so everybody is representing Mahaprabhu, and how are we to present Mahaprabhu through Guru, our Guru Parampara, and then look and see the, ex the super exalted nature of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Sarasati Thakur, Srila Sarasati Thakur, Guru Maharaj. This is, and this is what Guru Dev will be wanting, is wanting us to do. Keep our focus on the, the purity, the quality of our Sampradaya. So yes, we are most fortunate. Let us keep our heads bowed to the Vaishnavas. Let us keep ourselves nourished with the books and the lectures of our Guru Maharaj and Guru Dev and Srila Prabhupada. Let us stay safely here and 
in remembrance of the Rupa Nuga Sampradaya and giving all honor to all of the Vaishnavas of all creeds and sections, and in fact, all honor to all people, though at a distance if they are a Mayavadi or a Sahajya, we know Krishna is in their heart, <laughs> but we'll keep a distance from them so we don't get infected. This is the age of infection, isn't it? It's this, not only this age is the age of infection. It is the nature of the world like this. But we want to be infected with the good things. So we'll mix with those, with the, the good bugs, the bug of devotional service, unmotivated for Radha and Krishna. And on this note, I think I should be a little quiet. Oh, Praneshwari's got a hand raised. You didn't use your third hand today. You only used one of your two hands. Keeping Maharaj, your hands hidden. You have a humble dandavat from Anukul Chandra Prabhu. Oh, I didn't turn on Facebook. Oh, Facebook viewers, please excuse. Anukul Chandra Prabhu dandavat. Divya Shakti Didi. Dandavat. Jai Gauranga Prabhu in Australia. Oh, oh okay. Dandavat. Braja Mohini Didi. Jai. And Krishna Priya Didi in Sokel. All right, super. So more and more international. I completely forgot about Facebook. Sorry. The last, I've been a good boy the last few times. I've turned on Facebook so I can see who's there, but today I was a bad boy. I forgot. So thank you for that. All of you on Facebook who were with us live. And I, that means, I mean, really, we are happy to be with you, to be right there with you, sharing these things. And I'm using Zoom, so I'm seeing who's in front of us. And please, Praneshri, remind me next time, have you turned on Facebook? And I, I need reminders, so please do remind me, because we'd like to see who's there. And our obeisances to you all. We are here to serve and in service to Gurudev and Guru Maharaj. We're here in service to all of the devotees. And this is my life. This is happily we're here to try to uh, serve everybody. This is our literally our service coming from Guru Maharaj and Guru Dev. And may we be of service together. We are a team. Jai, Shila, Jai Om Vishnupad, Srila Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Sunda, Govinda, Dev, Goswami Maharaj Ki, Jai. Jai Om Vishnupad, Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Rakhak, Sridha Dev, Goswami Maharaj Ki, Jai. Jai Bhagavan, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Ki, Jai. Shri Rupa Nuga Guru Bhaga Ki, Jai. Vishwarani Srila Esi Bhakti Varanta Swami Prabhupada Ki, Jai. And all Jai. our present day Sri Chaitanya Sarasar Acharya Vrinda Ki, Jai. And all of the Vaishnavas who are watching now, who will be watching the recorded, because we know that you are seeing recorded, many of you see the recorded. To all of you, we appreciate your presence. To you all, Ki Jai, and to all of the worldwide devotees, Ki Jai. Nithai Gaur, Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo. So we'll see you soon. And oh, okay. Next week we'll give a little, next time we'll give a little easy homework. So please don't be afraid to join in. Easy but valuable homework. Kum Kum Diri, we'll invite you to speak next time. So keep some, I know you always have something in your pocket, but today, because something happened, the time has run by Kum Kum Diri. Don't spoil everything at the end. <laughs> Sorry, Maharaj, we're just spoiling our religion here. Hare Krishna. All right, Dandavat, permission to go. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you. I'll, I'll leave you together if there's anything further. Hare Krishna.